Hey guys, I'm Tunnel Tech Chap, and this is the new Surface Laptop Go 2. Terrible name, pretty good laptop, and actually I wish I had one of these 10 years ago. Definitely makes me feel old, but back in 2010 when I started university, most students rocked up to class with one of these bad boys. But not me, I couldn't afford one. I actually did bring my desktop PC with me for gaming, but uh, in terms of taking notes and lessons and actually having a laptop with me, I used whatever chunky, old, horrible Pentium Windows XP thing I could get my hands on. The thing is though, as awesome as the MacBook Air is, particularly now with the M1, and of course the new, even more impressive and more expensive M2 that's coming out, the cheapest Air, even with a student discount, will set you back 899 pounds, the same in dollars. However, this starts from 529 pounds or 599 in the US. Although I think the strongest competition for this comes from the likes of the Asus ZenBook 14 or actually the VivaBook 15, which of course is a little bit bigger, but it's similar money with an OLED screen, faster graphics, more RAM, more storage. Keep that one in mind as well. So it feels like we don't get a new Microsoft Surface device that often, but there are actually quite a few to choose from now with the recently launched Studio laptops at the top end, and then you've got the Surface Laptop 4, which goes up against the likes of the MacBook Air, and then we have this, the Surface Laptop Go 2. And honestly, I reckon this is the one, or at least one of the laptops that I'm gonna recommend to my friends when they ask what's the best all-round laptop uh, that doesn't cost an absolute fortune, which is one of the questions I get asked all the time. So the first Laptop Go came out in 2020, just as the pandemic was kicking off. Two years later, it was definitely due a refresh. And so with the Laptop Go 2, we get the newer 11th gen Intel processors with much faster Intel Iris graphics. Also, the base spec now gets 128 gigs of storage, up from 64. And it's also the faster PCIe kind, not the rubbish EMMC storage. They've also improved the webcam, which while not perfect, is probably the best camera you can get on a laptop at this price point. What do you think? As you can see, lighting makes a big difference to the quality and also the noise. Yeah, look at that. If you're in a dark room, it gets pretty ropey, but then spin around into the light, not too bad at all. And you can also see it adjusts a little bit. I'm a bit overexposed there, but then it sort of adjusts to fix it. Not too bad, not the best in the world, but definitely I think above average for a webcam. But what do you think in terms of the video and also the audio quality? The keys have 30% more travel, the battery's been boosted by a couple of hours, and most importantly of all, there's a new color. You may have to trust me on this, but this is Sage. It is very silvery, uh, it's just got a little hint of green, which you can see in certain lights. They're all metal, there's no fancy Alcantara options here like you get on the Surface laptop. And design-wise, nothing's really changed. It's still 1.1 kilograms, we still get a 12.4 inch screen with that three by two aspect ratio, so it's a little bit squarer and less rectangularly. That's, not, that's definitely not a word. Still, I think this has a really nice design, and it's a little bit tapered as well, so it gets thinner towards the front. These are absolutely lovely laptops. They just feel and look premium. And I really do think these are perfect for students or just as a nice little home or office laptop. I kind of wish the screen would go a little further back, a bit more flexibility there. The hinge is quite solid, not too much screen wobble. It doesn't flex, it's very, very well made. Although you can also see here those viewing angles aren't the best. Maybe that's a good thing though. So if you take this to your lecture, you're not worried about the person next to you copying your notes or seeing that actually looking at sports and Netflix and stuff work. Speaking of the screen though, and this is not even full HD. It's just a little bit over 720p. Although at 12.4 inches, it's not that bad actually. It's reasonably sharp. Uh, you can't see individual pixels. It's around 150 PPI, which at a normal distance, it's fine. And also while the brightness does drop off a little if you're looking off angle, on the whole, I think this pixel sense screen looks really good. Microsoft claimed 330 nits, but I measured 350, which is pretty decent actually. It's touch screen, although we don't get proper pen support. And also we get decent enough color accuracy. We're looking at about 98% sRGB. So I would be happy to watch movies, edit some photos, or write an essay on this all day. In fact, I wrote my entire script for this on the Surface Laptop Go 2, and it was a really nice experience. I love the keyboard on this. As I say, it's got a little bit more key travel than before, though you might not really notice it. It's really nice to type on. I do just kind of wish, though, that we had a backlight. There is no lighting behind the keys, which isn't the end of the world, but it would be nice. I tell a lie, there is one key that gets a backlight, and that is the power button, which actually doubles as a fingerprint reader. So how much? Well, as I say, it starts at 529 pounds, $599, uh, and that's for four gigs of RAM, uh, I know, uh, and 128 storage, which is double 
the amount from last time, although this does start at £50 more. But overall, I think we're getting a better deal on the entry spec. However, it does start to get a bit pricey. 8 gigs of RAM, 128 storage, it's an extra 100. And if you want 8 gigs of RAM and 256 storage, it's another 100 again. So I think actually this mid-range model I've got here with the 8 gigs of RAM and 128 storage is probably the sweet spot, £629 or $699. All versions get the same Intel i5 1135G7 processor with the Iris Xe integrated graphics. And while the new processor gives us a welcome 18 to 20% boost in performance, the 82% jump in graphics is definitely the headline. That is huge, and I could even get away with some light gaming in Rainbow Six Siege, on top of that, Microsoft claim they've also boosted the battery with this, and we should be looking at up to 13 and a half hours. But I can tell you that's not what you're gonna get in real life. One hour of YouTube drained 18% of the battery. And actually in my everyday kind of use of a bit of Netflix, YouTube, Spotify, Google Docs, those sort of normal things, I got between six and a half and seven hours. So you might just about get through a full day of school or work at the office with this. Although the good news is that the Microsoft connector charger is nice and small, so you can carry it with you. It takes about an hour to charge up to 80%. Plus you can also charge it via the USB-C port if you prefer. Speaking of which, we get a regular and actually quite slow USB Type-A, plus the USB-C, which supports display out if you want to hook up an external monitor, as well as data and charging, and also a headphone jack and on the other side, the Surface Connect charging port. Also, the speakers are surprisingly good for a laptop this size and, well, this price. Not bad at all. So, should you buy it? Well, yeah, I really like the Surface Laptop Go 2, as I say, terrible name, but there are a couple of problems. As I say, a slightly longer battery life would be nice. Uh, that screen resolution really isn't particularly impressive, nor are those view angles, but they're fine. And it is a lovely laptop to just use, to type on. The precision touchpad is really responsive. And of course you've got the touchscreen if you prefer. I just kind of wish that we had eight gigs of RAM as standard. That would make a big difference. I don't really want to pay another hundred just for four more gigs of RAM. And I think the biggest problem with this is the competition. Not from the MacBook Air, but as I say, things like the Zenbook or VivaBook with arguably better specs and for similar money. But if you want a good all-round student slash home laptop and don't want to pay an absolute fortune and you want a nice compact size, definitely give the Surface Laptop Go to a look. And actually, if you do fancy checking this out, I'll leave links in the description below. And if you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments. And also let me know if you would go for this or something like the VivaBook instead. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me, hopefully you do, then a cheeky little like and subscribe below would be very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.